Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. So we are here in Trim Town and this is an early 13th century, I think it was 1202 um, monastery uh, founded by Simon the Rochford, Bishop of Mead, located at the east end of the port field. It became the cathedral of the diocese in 1206. Now, this is not really why we are here, but there is a graveyard located just behind this wall and a very interesting tomb in here. So I'm going to walk you down to the graveyard. I'm going to show you the inside of the ruins here anyway, because they are actually very, very beautiful. So this is actually quite a busy spot because it is used as a walkway from here right down to Trim Castle. So the graveyard is located all the way around it here. And I spotted this earlier on, on the wall. It's an angel, yeah, it's beautiful. Maybe it's the only one remaining because it's the only one I've seen. There is something behind this, like an effigy as well. Very hard to see on the phone. But behind that there is an effigy standing up. It's like they've tried to preserve it. Some original parts of the monastery there as well preserved. Right, out to the graveyard. And you can just see just a load of yew trees just there. So we're going to go this way first. See if there's any forgotten headstones. Gosh, that looks really, really old, doesn't it? That one there. This one has two cherubs on it. One on either side. The IHS there. It says the stone was erected by Sylvester. See if we can find a date. 34 years old. Eighteen hundreds. It looks like Sylvester Mann. Is that Sylvester? Oh, hold on. Breen, Brennan. Brennan, Brennan, in memory of his two sons, James, who died at December 1800, aged 34 years. And it looks like Owen as well there, aged 27. Beautiful cherubs, look at that. Gorgeous little faces, haven't they? So well carved. Different expressions. Yeah, thing. so pretty. Here here. Wow, let's come in here. I love these ones. 
This also has churned faces as well. Look at that. Look at the wings, the way they're spread out. I've never seen anything like that. That one and that one. Memory erected by Mrs. Mary Gibney. Gibney. Um, to memory of her husband, Thomas. Um, 2nd of January, it looks like 1837. Age is completely gone. Oh, age 48. age 48, it's there. And also her daughter, Mary, as well as there. Wow, that is stunning. And it looks so much better when it's slightly dark with the torch on it. Some more beautiful designs in this one. Of the of your charity, pray for the soul of Kate, the dearly loved wife of Christopher McOwen of Trim, who died April the 13th, 1873, and also the above. Uh, Christopher McOwen, 1873, I think it says. Jesus, mercy, lady, help wrote there. Never seen that before. Lady, help. Wow. See a, a newer grave here with a picture. Andre Anderson died 26th of July 1997, aged 22. I know that. You'll never walk alone, what? I knew a guy who lived in the same town as me. Yeah. We used to hang around together. That's his brother. Stop, is it? I remember he told me his brother's name was Andre. That's his brother. Wow. So he probably doesn't watch these videos. There his name is Darren. Okay, so that's Darren's brother. That's that Darren's you brother. knew Darren then. So I know Darren. Wow. What a small world. Yeah, so sad. Andre, yeah. Age just 22. You'll never walk alone, so obviously a Liverpool supporter as well. Small world. We often find that when we're doing these explores that, you know, things come full circle. There's a lot of high crosses in here as well. Beautiful high cross. Mrs. Rose. Pentony. Pentony. Um, who departed this life February the 11th, 1889, in her 67th year of her age. Erected by her loving husband, John. And also the view of John, then John passed as well in 1894, age 75. Okay, let's keep going. As I said, there is a very, very interesting tomb in here. And I'm, I'm going to show you and tell you the, the story very very interesting very very visited and i will tell you more about that as well when we get over there the tree the middle stump of flowers and oh yeah maybe somebody's ashes are there just on that tree stump let me see look there's another one in here in the dark just watch where we're walking just this one. Ooh. Oh, pigeons. <laughs> Just pigeons. <laughs> Look at the colour of that stone. With the sun. With the sun. It looks gold. That is just so beautiful. Um, I don't think I'd be able to see a name. I'm not sure. I don't want to walk in on the grave. We'll stand here, erected by Mrs. Deavy, Trim, to the memory of her beloved son, Patrick John Deavy. 1868 and he was only 33. That is stunning. But the sunlight on it, it looks like it's gold, doesn't it? Yeah. That is gorgeous. Okay. So the area around here is... Uh, 
quite built up. You can see lots of houses. Some new burials just down there. Oh, look at this for a great idea. We have marigolds planted in a tree trunk. That's the other side of the one we were saying. I wonder, is there ashes there, maybe? Because there is a name. So even though the tree was cut down, it still gives it a bit of life. It does it? give life, yeah. Beautiful marigolds, I love them. Some flowers I do know, but I often have to ask mommy or daddy. They are very good gardeners. There are so many headstones here. So many of them are full of the lichen or lichen or lichen. There's different pronunciations for it. And sometimes it does make it extremely hard to read. This one here is kind of like an obelisk. It has a, a cross on that side of it. And a cross on this side. And look at the sun. The sun there in the background. It's almost like gold. This tomb has angels or cherubs look at that on either side there's just so much lichen that it makes it so hard to uh, read them unfortunately right now i see one down here i want to see what it is it looks like it's highly decorated Wow, look at this. To me, it looks like it's a family crest, maybe. Wow, look at that for engraving. Wow. I think it's a family crest or coat of arms. It's a stag at the top. Possibly a line. Looks like a line. And it's, it's An Latin, arm. I think. There's a shamrock there at the base of the line, an and at the top. Rolling, something like an no, that is a stag. Oh, is it? It's a stag. Oh, it's a stag. A on line. top of the shield with the line, and we have some shamrocks. So that's a family crest, or a. There, there's Latin, I think. Hold on now. Let's go around. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Okay, so we have beautiful. Cherub here. Skull and yeah, we have a cherub here. Skull and crossbones. I'm not walking on the grave. I'm just trying to lean across to show you guys. That is amazing. We have the crucifixion scene and two more cherubs on either side. Probably Mary and Mary Mary Magdalene there the, at the cross side by side. This, yeah. It's like a sunflower here, and then like a, a, veil. a veil or a curtain. Now, will we be able to read, I wonder? This monument was erected by... Andrew. Andrew. It's hard to say. S.H. Sheridan. Sheridan. In, In memory, memory of, of his, his wife. wife. And... And dear. Dear. Our dearest, maybe? Friend. Oh, and friend, friend, yeah. His wife, Jane. Sheridan departed this life October 1806. 1806, aged. Maybe the age is down here. 60. That is stunning. What a beautiful piece of work. That is just amazing. And obviously then Sheridan is the family crest on the other side. Yeah. I'd imagine. Wow, that is amazing. That is quite special. Wow, I see another beautiful one. Look at this one, another cherub. A cherub here. Uh, this monument was erected by Jane Plunkett in memory of his father. Oh, James it is. James Plunkett in memory of his father. 
Thomas Plunkett, who died 1753, aged 52. Also his mother there as well. Look at the, the cherub's face. It's like a big smile on its face. Look at that. Wow. Like it's laughing. Yeah, beautiful. Now, there's another one here that I spotted. Looks like an angel sitting down. What is it, the Grim Reaper? Look at this. It's the Grim Reaper. It's Look an at, angel. But it looks like it has the... Or the Grim the Reaper thing is there, but it looks, see the wings. Oh, there's wings. Is it the angel of death? Could be the angel of death, yeah. Wow. What's this? So we have... Gosh, I don't well, know. it's an hourglass. Hour okay, yeah. So he's looking, the angel is looking at an hourglass. It's the time, like, isn't it? Your yeah. own mortality. Time is running out. We have wings. But to me, then this is a, a uh, side. A side. A side, some people call it a this side. This is a side, yeah. Like you use for cutting. Like the Grim Reaper would have, corn like. Corn and stuff, or cutting stuff in fields, grass. We won't be able to read it. The writing is all but gone. Ah. Oh. It looks like follow there. Oh, oh my goodness. Look down here as well. Skull here. Ah, oh, look at. Skull and crossbones. Now this grave is, is falling. Uh, See, it's going, it's falling right over. These are works of art and they need to be preserved, these. Look at your stuff even oh, here. Look at all that. Oh, I wish I could see it all. It looks it's like, like um, flowers or leaves there. Look at that. The, the skull and crossbones, guys. And it's not the only skull and crossbones that we have found in the last few videos. So skull and crossbones. The angel of death, I'm going to say, just because it has the Grim Reaper's scythe, has the hourglass. And it's kind of like in a, a, a pose, like a sitting pose, but its face is, is staring at the, the hourglass. Time is, has come, maybe, to whoever that is there. As I said, we can't read it. I'll just show you the position of the stone. It's fallen right over. I don't even know where the grave would have been. Maybe there was writing on the other side. Oh, look at the, oh my God, on the other side. Oh, lads, I'm going to have to try and lie down to show you. Oh, Lord, looks like this crucifixion, is it? Oh, I wish I could see this better. Yeah. Oh, yeah, all the writing is on that there. We have cherubs and... Jesus on the cross and possibly Mary beside him and Mary Magdalene there. What a pity. So the, this, no, not a hope. On the other side of this, then we have what I'm going to presume is, is the angel of death. Wow, that is quite amazing. Absolutely quite amazing. Oh my goodness. Okay, GV, where are you going to put it? Be very careful. GV has lifted the stone and we are going to try and place it back. Gosh, show me the, the torch. Don't let that fall. Wow! That is definitely the best carving I have ever seen sure. for a crucifixion. Mm -hmm. This monument was erected by James Potts. Potts. For himself and his prefer posterity. posterity. Here lies the body of his father oh, and, and mother. No date. It has snapped. I don't know where the base of it is. Sorry. Something there. His <laughs> father. And his mother. Alice, is it? Alice, yeah. And Thomas, maybe. Affection. Oh, wow. See. That is stunning. So on this side, we have the mm -hmm. scene of the crucifixion. And on the other side, the angel of death. GV has just lifted it up the best you can. I'm going to pause the video and I'm going to see if we can actually put this in a position that it will stay upright. <laughs> right, so guys, we have it standing up, okay? But our problem is I am actually just a little bit nervous 
that it will topple on someone that is walking by. It's not exactly um, as sturdy as we'd like. So we're going to actually place it back down just for safety reasons. Um, but we got to read it anyway, and it is a stunning, stunning stone. It needs professional yeah. support underneath it. It does. Right, so it's back where we, we found it. Um, just I'd love to have got it standing up in a position that it was safe, but I'm actually afraid that someone would tip off it and it would come flying down, especially if it was a child or something playing. Um, I just don't want that on my my conscience, but I would love to see that fixed. We have an old stone here. Oh, wow, there's writing on it. Look at that. Edmund and he, uh, Edmund something, Mary, pray for 17. His wife, 1713, guys. Very hard to read it. Very hard to read that. But it looked like Edmund there. Right, that is going to bring us in here, inside the runes. I just want to read this first. Is there anything on that? Monastery. Monastery. Something, something, something. It looks like it's uh, Latin. To me, it looks like it's Latin. Right. This is the, the very interesting tomb. And on top of the tomb are effigies. Now, firstly, I want to show you the Beautiful carvings that go around. I have some shields. There is more carvings on this side. It's highly decorated. And these are the effigies. So we are standing in a small 15th century parish church. And this is an ornate 16th century tomb of Sir Lucas Dillon and his wife, Jane. And now the story behind them is that locally, the tomb is known as the tomb of the jealous man and woman. There's also another story that if you have warts, if you have warts and you stroke the wart, which sounds disgusting, with a pin, place the pin on the tomb. When the pin goes rusty, your wart has disappeared. Now, there are pins in every part. You can see it there, a little safety pin of this tomb in the effigies. They're all there. They're all rusted all of them there is so many of them there are everywhere so obviously people come and really really believe in this story they're actually hard to see even because they're so rusted but they are there there's hundreds there's thousands of different pins and safety pins but um so they're not um really sure where the tomb got its name the tomb of the jealous man and woman but it is said that i believe was it his first wife is buried in a very similar tomb in Dublin. And that is why, you know, after this couple's day, they built the very same tomb, same effigies, the whole lot. And that's why the locals seemingly have called it um, the tomb of the jealous man and woman, meaning that they were so jealous of their ex-husband's or ex-wife's tomb that they built one for themselves. So very, very interesting. Um, we have some more beautiful designs around the side. These to me look like they are either coat of arms or family crests. But there they are, the tomb of the jealous man and woman. 
they would have had facial expressions the whole lot, but I suppose with weather, they're almost completely gone. You see the old style of their clothing even still there. It's amazing, but what's really strange is all these pins. People really, really believe that their warts will be gone. It's kind of disgusting, really. We'll probably get warts after touching this tomb. <laughs> There's so many. I hope not. Um, but yeah, that's that's the story of the jealous man and woman. And as I said, it's to do with the jealousy of either an ex-husband or an ex-wife. I can't really remember. Um, they built a tomb. This couple built a tomb similar um, out of jealousy. And the locals still call it to this day. When you look it up, it is the tomb of the jealous man and woman. Beautiful tomb. Absolutely gorgeous. So, guys, I think I'll wrap it up there. Um, look at the size of it there. Fantastic. And it does sit very proudly there in the old ruins of the parish church. But uh, I'm going to leave it there. It's getting very late. The sun has gone down. So nightfall is coming fast. So for now, guys, don't forget to like this video. Subscribe if you haven't already. Hit the notification bell and that will let you know when I upload next. And uh, take care. God bless. From me and GV in Trim in Mead. I will talk to you all again soon.